We have a question from our friend Gil Wolf. Um, question. What are some good workouts that you like for increasing punching power? And please give me something other than just punching a heavy bag because I already know that is a good workout for that. I remember a video you did discussing the fact that you need to be strong for jujitsu and not rely on just quote unquote technique. Because without strength, you have no technique. So would strength help you in boxing? I've read some article saying that shadow boxing with dumbbells does not increase your punching power. Is that bullshit or true? Hey, thank you so much for the question about punching power. <sighs> Come with me. Let's talk about that for a minute. Hey, it's Ramsey Dewey at the JX Fight Club in Shanghai, China. And thanks so much for the question. Again, let's first address the issue of weights. Now, I've, I've made a whole video about this before, but I'm going to make a quick recap. Do weights punching with them as such, does this make you stronger or faster or more powerful as far as punching goes? I'm going to tell you straight up, no, it doesn't. And here's why. The real power from punch, well, it, it's generated from a bunch of different body mechanics, one of which, one of the very important ones, is contracting the hand and the forearm muscles together very tightly, very quickly on impact. Okay. Remember, we move the way that we train to move. So if I'm holding on to a weight, what am I doing? I'm clinching my fist tightly to make sure this doesn't go flying out of my hand at the end of the impact. Okay. So what I'm training my hand to do is stay tight the whole time. Ultimately, that's going to slow me down. I mean, try, you know, just making tight, solid fists and throwing punches as fast and as hard as you can versus having loose fists and snap them on impact. You'll see one is definitely faster and harder than the other. Okay, so an alternative to that, yeah, just put on a pair of boxing gloves. They have weight, just like those little hand weights do, but they allow you to articulate the hand and the forearm muscles in the correct way for power punching. Now, let's move on to the next question. So you probably noticed at the beginning of the video I was playing around with this little doohickey, uh, a jury-rigged double-end bag made out of a rubber ball and some bungee cords. I got the idea from Shane Mosley. He's got a, a video up here on YouTube where he made a very similar heavy bag with a red rubber ball. So what's the advantage of using this over one of those standard inflatable double end bags? I'll, I'll tell you, it's smaller, it moves faster, it hits you harder, and it is about the size of a human chin. Okay. What does that have to do with power? Well, I'm going to tell you something that might sound a little disappointing. Power is not the most important thing at all in boxing or fighting or, or MMA or, or kickboxing or Muay Thai. Okay? Precision is much, much more important. Okay? A punch can feel a whole lot harder than it really is if it is precise. Again, this is about the size of a human chin. It's hard, so it's going to teach you to hit something that is hard, you know, like the, the bones on a human skull. Okay? and it's going to teach you to be precise. Okay? If you can clip that chin every time at will, that is so much more important than throwing huge, heavy, concussive force style punches. But don't worry, don't worry. I got some tips to actually increase your power as well. But never ever forget precision is much, much more important than power. Now, before we get into any specifics about exercises to increase your power, we have to understand body mechanics. You probably noticed these shoes I'm wearing, boxing shoes. Why do boxers wear shoes? Very simple reason, so their feet can grip the canvas better, so their toes and the balls of the feet can dig into that canvas and push off and generate power. Big misconception about boxing, striking in general, is that the power comes from the arms. Some of it does, yes, that little snap at the end of the fist, at the end of the punch, you know, the shoulder whirl, where we turn that over and stretch that out, where we turn the upper body over, twist at the waist and the hips a little bit, drive the hips into it, but you know, these legs, these legs, that's where the really real power comes from. Part of it is pushing off from the floor, and the other part is falling steps. I've talked about this before. If, if you really, really want to understand power punching, I have a book recommendation for you. Jack Dempsey's book, Championship Fighting, Explosive Punching and Aggressive 
defense. Read that. Study it like a Bible. Really, there's only one part in that book that I would say is outdated, even though the book's old, it's super old. I mean, Jack Dempsey was fighting a hundred years ago. But the man understood power, how to generate it, and how to teach it. Read that book, study it, okay? I'm gonna go over some of the principles from that book with you today, but I can't stress that enough. If you are serious about increasing your punching power, read Jack Dempsey's book. All right, this thingamabob right here, the speed bag. What does this have to do with power? Well, when I started out, I had no idea. Then I read Jack Dempsey's book, which I recommended, and he started talking about the speed bag, except he didn't call it a speed bag. He called it the light punching bag, you know, the pear-shaped one that hangs and swings around. Now, a hundred years ago, when they first invented these things, the idea was not rhythm and tricking and eye-hand coordination. It was to develop <laughs> explosive punching power against a moving target and to teach you to strike an oncoming target. That's one of the big keys of punching power that a lot of people forget, is if I hit something when it's moving away from me, I'm not gonna hit it nearly as hard as if it's moving toward me. Boom! And there's a straight on collision. We cannot properly hit a speed bag unless we're hitting it when it's traveling toward us. It's just like um, in Muay Thai, for example, the knee, boom, pulling our opponent into the knee is possibly the most powerful strike the human body can generate, not because knees by themselves are so strong or so powerful, but because pulling our opponent into the knee, so we've got force coming from this way and force coming from this way, causes this intense collision of forces from both directions, amplifying, multiplying that force. It's like a car crash. If we have two cars, one is stationary or even moving away, one's coming faster, boom. The other one's going to get knocked away a little bit. It's not going to do a great deal of damage. If the car is stationary, uh, maybe a little bit more. But if two cars are moving toward each other, even at low speeds, those cars are going to get totaled. They're going to get smashed, folded up on each other. That is an absolutely crucial tip for increasing your punching power, is hit your opponent when he's moving toward you. It's also just good boxing technique in general. If we're always chasing the guy, we're never going to land flush on him. Right? A power punch is a flush punch. <sighs> so that we can train this last segment of the punch. In fact, you know, just do this. The sound of one hand clapping. Boom. All right, train those fast twitch muscles in the hand, right? So that a very, at a very short range, you know, even that one inch punch, like, you know, Bruce Lee's one inch style punch, that's, that's what the speed bag trains. So what is Jack Dempsey's book actually about? Well, a few things. Three knuckle contact instead of two knuckle contact, okay? Pure punches instead of impure punches. Right. Falling steps. And shoulder whirls. Abide by those few simple principles and you can dramatically increase your punching power. Good body mechanics. Let's break it down. Use your legs to increase power on the jab with a falling step. Step forward on your right to increase power on a straight punch. So notice this leg comes forward and essentially slaps my thigh at the same time as my hand and shoulder come forward. You'll also dramatically increase your reach. Increase power on a hook with a falling step to the side. power in an uppercut by digging your toes into the floor and driving upward with the legs. You can increase power on a bolo punch with your legs as well. In 
increase power on a shovel hook by driving into it with the ball of the foot into the floor. Use those legs, yes? Let's talk about physics for a minute. Why is that important? Power is a physics formula. Power is force amplified by velocity. Okay? So how much we weigh is going to determine how much power we can generate. The more we weigh, the more potential for power generation we have. Acceleration, the faster we move, the faster we accelerate, the more power we can generate. Now, our number one source of acceleration, it's not even our own body, it's not even our muscles, it's the planet we're standing on. Planet Earth generates a force. It accelerates us downward toward it at approximately 9.8 meters per second. That's pretty fast. Everybody has access to that power if they want it. So, when Jack Dempsey talked about falling steps, what he's talking about is using the force of gravity, a certain rise and fall in the movement, a rise and a fall, because when I drop my body weight, I accelerate my body and increase the power <coughs> when I land. Okay? I've got two objects here, weigh roughly the same. I've got a very small uh, dumbbell and I've got some, uh, some boxing gloves. Now, uh, ask yourself, would you rather have me drop these on your stomach if you were lying on the ground, or this one? Answer's pretty clear, right? The, the less dense one, right? You want the soft stuff falling on you instead of the, the hard stuff, even though the weight is about the same. Why is that? Well, because you got more stuff concentrated into a smaller, harder point. That's why we punch with our knuckles instead of with our pectoral muscles, okay? That's harder, it's more dense, but we have to be able to concentrate our body weight into these small points of contact. Whether you were using three knuckle contact like Jack Dempsey taught, or two knuckle contact like a lot of uh, traditional martial arts teach. Okay, either way we have to put our full body weight into the strike. How do we do that? We fall. And then we catch ourselves. We fall, and we catch ourselves fall and we catch ourselves. <clears throat> we do that with our feet, we do that with our body. In his book, Jack Dempsey gave this example close to the beginning. That's when I realized I love this guy, I love this book, I gotta read this. Because, um, you know, it doesn't start out like any other technique book. He tells a story, a, a conceptual hypothetical situation about a baby up on the fourth story of a building. And there's a big, strong man walking on the street below. And if that baby were to fall out of the building, ah, and hit the man on the head, it could potentially kill that man. A newborn child could potentially kill a full, growing, strong, athletic man if it fell those four stories and accelerated by 9.8 meters per second. Now, you must always remember, as Mr. Dempsey taught, you are stronger than a baby. You are bigger than a baby, and you don't have to fall out of a building in order to produce power. Even falling a few simple inches, you know, my foot to the floor, lift that up, drop it down, I'm creating power through gravity. The planet is pulling me toward it. Now, I don't have to lift my leg all the way up there. Just stay up on the balls of the feet. Drop it forward a little bit and let your body weight accelerate into that. So, one of the most important exercises you can do on your own to develop power is not even the heavy bag. I'm not even going to recommend that, and I wouldn't have even if, even if you didn't ask me to. And I'll tell you why. Because I see way too many bad habits on the heavy bag. I see a lot of arm punching. I see a lot of people standing straight in front of it, throwing from their stance instead of using their feet. And if your legs don't get tired when you're doing your boxing workout, you're doing it wrong. You're doing something wrong if you don't, if you don't feel sore in those legs the next day. Right? Your legs should be working more than anything. I mean, your calf muscles should be on fire from moving up on the balls of the feet the whole time. You know, very much like skipping rope over and over and over again. I mean, that is why boxers skip rope and they do all that jogging and all that road work. 
to get that in the muscle memory of always be up on the balls of the feet so that you can move quickly, so you can boom, drop into those falling steps quickly, right? So we can rise and fall and rise and fall and rise and boom, fall. And on the falling part, that's where we increase the power through gravity. Let's talk about strength for a minute, since you asked. Now, you mentioned one of my videos where I talked about jujitsu, and I don't want there to be any misunderstanding. Strength is not a replacement for technique. But, and this is a very important but, strength augments your technique. Every good athlete understands this. Every good athlete strives to be as strong as they can be. They strive to be the strongest person that they can be. Why? Because strength increases all other athletic attributes. Strength makes you healthier. Strength makes you faster. Strength makes you more powerful. Strength is the precedent for power. If we're not strong, we will not be powerful. It's that simple. Now, in Jack Dempsey's book, I mean, almost every word of that I would say is gospel truth as far as boxing is concerned, except for one thing which is a product of the time, which is what he said about strength training. He, he said, don't do strength training because it will make you muscle bound and slow. And that was a common belief back then. And that's absolutely not true. It's not. Strength makes you better. It makes you faster. If you look at sprinters, for example, they're the most muscular runners out there. They're big dudes for the most part. Whereas if you look at distance runners, they're skinny little dudes. Okay? Because if we want to produce enormous amounts of power, powerful strides to hurl our body across the, across the track, we have to have big powerful muscles to accommodate that. Now, boxing is kind of halfway in the middle. It's like half power and strength and half endurance sport. And you see people in endurance sports tend to be skinnier, a lot skinnier. You know, very svelte, almost uh, bone thin at, at, at points. So in boxing, we have to find the happy medium. I mean, bigger muscles burn up more energy. They do. So if you want fat loss, build your muscles up. It'll gobble away that fat, gobble up those extra calories. But if you ever watch, say, a huge strongman competitor in a fight, they tend to get tired more quickly for a couple of reasons. One, they're generally training for one activity, strongman, and competing in another, boxing or MMA or whatever it is and so the body is simply not as conditioned to that activity. The second reason, and this is an important one, is that bigger muscles burn up more energy. And so, you know, there is a trade-off there. But bigger muscles come from bigger eating, not from bigger exercise. If you want your muscles to grow, you have to consume more calories. It's that simple. Your body won't grow unless you eat more. I hear this all the time from both men and women, women who are afraid to pick up anything other than a tiny little dumbbell because they think it'll turn them into the Incredible Hulk, and you have to talk them down saying, no, 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 in order to grow, you have to eat a lot more food. And you gotta lift much, much heavier weights than that. And I hear this from a lot of men as well. They say, oh, I don't wanna get too big. If I lift weights, my, my muscles are gonna grow, my shirts won't fit anymore. And that's stupid, too, because you might feel bigger because you have a nice pump in those arms, and, but you won't actually be bigger unless, unless you're eating more, okay? So, strength in jiu-jitsu, strength in boxing, strength in any sport is a good thing. We want to be as strong as we can pound for pound. So, I weigh about 82 kilos right now. And my goal is to be the strongest 82 kilos I possibly can be. I'm not there yet, but I'm striving for it. I know some much, much stronger people at my weight. And that's my goal, you know, to get up there, be the strongest I can be at my weight. Right? You can be a skinny little dude and still be very strong for your size. One of my students, he's this, this local Shanghainese guy named Nelson. 
and you know you see him from the outside and he's this little dude with glasses he doesn't look that tough but you get on the mat with him and oh, he is wiry so wiry very difficult to control because pound for pound he he's made a beef jerky man so that's that's what we want we want to we want to be dense we want every ounce on our body to matter Now, as far as specific exercises go, plyometrics are great because it is a power movement. So plyo jumps, jump up on a box, jump up on a table, jump up on a chair, whatever stable surface, jump over things. <sighs> Plyometric push-ups, push yourself up off the floor, that's good stuff. Okay, is that a replacement for good body mechanics? No, but it will help condition your body to hmm, explode a little bit more. You want to think about that term explosion as far as punching goes. We don't just want to hit hard, we want to boom, explode. All right, that comes from a breath-body connection as well. We won't move any differently than we breathe, so make sure to connect your movement to your breath. Right. So sing yourself a little song when you move. Right. Why? Because Breath amplifies movement. The body moves the way we, we breathe. So if we breathe explosively, pss, percussively, ah, we will move that way too. Okay? Shadow boxing. The most important exercise you can do for boxing outside of sparring. Also for producing power. If we focus on correct body mechanics, if we focus on our falling step, our pure punching, our you know, three knuckle contact, our shoulder whirl, you know, distributing the weight properly. I have a student yesterday, we were sparring, and he's actually heavier than me. We didn't even go to the ground, I just had him up against the wall and, you know, I was roughing him up a little bit. Yeah, I'm not, not hurting him, but, you know, just, just being, being a little rough. And afterwards he said, oh man, you're so heavy. Because to him I felt heavy because of my body mechanics, the way I was moving. And, Bear in mind, again, he's heavier than me. You know, he's heavier downward, but I put more weight this way on him. Pushed off through the toes. You know, engage the legs. Correct body mechanics, just distribution of weight. Put all the weight into small concentrated points, like get that shoulder and jam it right into the neck. Get the head and jam it right into the neck. You know, small points of contact containing all of your body weight. That's what a fist is. That is what a punch is. Okay. So I know this isn't a cookie cutter, do this exercise, do that exercise, do that exercise, and then your boxing will be better. Because I don't think that exists. I'm not going to tell you, pick up some weights and punch, because one, that's a stupid exercise. And two, while it might make you feel faster once you put the weights down, it might make you feel stronger or more powerful once you put the weights down by contrast. I don't believe it actually will make you stronger or faster. But, at the same time, the placebo effect is an extremely powerful, real thing. It does control what happens in our physical universe. If it's real in the mind, it's real in the body. So if you believe in the punching with weights thing, if that is working out for you, if you honestly believe it's making you faster and stronger and more powerful, great, keep doing it. It's that placebo effect, man, it's a... Whew. It's a big deal. Now, one more thing. With all of our movement, with every single martial art, this should be the goal of every single martial art, whether it's boxing or jiu-jitsu or whatever. We want to be the most efficient movers we possibly can be. I had a question about Tai Chi the other day. And a, a Tai Chi master I, I grappled with, I sparred with a little bit, and he was awesome, and he was so good at body mechanics. And that's a rare thing to see in today's world because most people don't train like that. Most people just do slow motion dancing in the park and don't know how to fight. But this dude did know how to fight. He did understand body mechanics. And he was so efficient at it. And what I took away from that experience was that's the goal of every single martial art. The best boxers are the most efficient boxers. They're the most efficient at, at generating power, at moving, at body mechanics. The best jiu-jitsu guys, you know, they're, they're not necessarily the strongest, 
but they're the best at using the strength that they do have. They're the best at body mechanics, at putting all of their weight into these little concentrated points to make it seem like they're much, much bigger and stronger and heavier than they really are. It's all about efficient movement, right? Good technique is nothing more than efficient movement. It is an efficient use of strength and power. Bad technique is the opposite. Bad technique is an inefficient use of strength and power, right? So my friend, as far as exercises go, ask yourself constantly, is this efficient? Is this an efficient use of my time? And is this an efficient use of my power? If you can answer those two questions, sky is the limit. Thank you for watching. Now get out there and train.